Hi guys and welcome to a quick tutorial for this satisfying magic terrarium toy. It reminds me quite a bit of those Jelly Worlds tanks, however I believe this is via a completely different company. As with all of my craft kit reviews, we'll take a look at how easy it is to make, the science behind how it works, and whether the final result is worth the money. This toy jumped out at me in the shop because the product was really well designed with lots of attention to detail. When I was working as a graphic designer, I used to specialize in toys and packaging, so it's impossible for me not to have an opinion on box design. One of the things that always annoyed me is when companies try to cut corners simply because the product is marketed at children. They assume that kids can't tell the difference between good and bad design, and that's absolutely not true. This attitude often carries over to the product, so if the packaging looks cheap and generic, then the stuff inside is more likely to be a waste of money. In this case though, the design is excellent, which is usually a good sign for the product inside. I also found some different versions of this terrarium on Amazon, and I've linked everything down below. All of these kits cost around $12, which I think is reasonable, considering that you get a nice piece of room decor which you can keep forever. However, the hands-on time is very low, so this isn't a DIY that's designed to keep you busy for quite a while. If you're looking for a project within the same price range that will keep you occupied for hours or even days, then the best options will be needle felting or dollhouse kits. The accessories came with a pleasant surprise because the tree is sealed inside holographic foil. The instructions are easy to understand and the process looks pretty straightforward. An interesting thing I noticed here is that they actually list exactly which chemicals are used inside the kit. Maybe there's a legal reason in this case, but I normally find that all these so-called magical toys never reveal the ingredients. In most of my previous videos, half the time is simply spent trying to discover what is actually inside these products. I've linked all of those below in case you want to find out. In this case, the crystal powder contains potassium phosphate monobasic and ammonium dihydrogen phosphate, which are both types of salt that crystallize easily. The third ingredient is O Simon 5 O, which I think I'm pronouncing wrong, but it's simply an antifungal preservative that's used in cosmetics. All of these are non-toxic, which is what you'd expect from a toy kit. To get started, all you have to do is fill the inner parts of the base with water and then empty the crystal powder inside. Then stir until everything is dissolved. This part was actually a bit harder than expected because the water was very shallow. My spoon kept hitting the ridges on the bottom which made the water splash out and the crystals took quite a long time to dissolve. Once done, just press on the upper piece until it clicks into place. Now assemble the two sides of the tree and place it inside the base so it touches the crystal solution. For the final step, you can decorate the terrarium using all the accessories provided. I think mochi squishies or mini Sylvanian family figures would also be really cute for this. You can't see it very well on camera, but the sand contains iridescent glitter which is very aesthetic to look at. I was able to cover the entire base using two packets of sand, but you actually get four packets in total. I thought this was surprisingly generous, so you can either use it all at once or keep some of the glittery sand for future DIY projects. Now you can see that the liquid is already traveling up the tree and the instructions tell you to leave this in the open air for 12 hours. Do not put the cover on at this point, otherwise the liquid can't evaporate and the crystals won't grow. Another thing I'd recommend is to find the place where you want to keep this forever, such as a bookshelf or a side table, and go put it there now. The reason is because the crystals are incredibly fragile, so you don't want to move this around after it's done. I was shocked to come back the next day to find this beautiful tree, however I accidentally knocked off a whole bunch of crystals just by trying to move it across the table. One of the chemicals in the powder is monoammonium phosphate, which produces long crystals that look like needles. You can definitely see some of that here, and it makes everything look more like tree foliage. I was also quite impressed by how well the crystals picked up color from the cardboard branches. The other versions of this kit all have different color schemes, so I'm pretty tempted to try those out as well. So on the whole, I really enjoyed this kit because you get exactly what's shown on the pictures and the process is almost foolproof. If there's one thing I had to nitpick about, it's that the terrarium cover is quite a bit taller than the actual tree. 
So once you close it up like this, the upper part looks a bit empty. I also feel that this DIY might not be that suitable for younger children because they really want to touch the results. The crystals are gorgeous, but you can't disturb them in any way, otherwise everything will fall apart. So I hope you enjoyed this video and please follow me on TikTok as well for more DIYs and oddly satisfying content. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!